during my college career at Cabrini College, I applied for an internship at 100.3 WKSD in Media, Pennsylvania. The station was better known as KISS 100, K-I-S-S. The format was adult contemporary, a format that was kind of outside the scope of what Crank and Frank would play on WCAB 650 AM during the loony hour and other radio stations in which I appeared. Shortly after the, in the application was submitted, I was then accepted for the internship and began in the summer of 1989. Through the internship, I ended up learning a lot about the radio industry. I learned about what goes on behind the scenes what the DJs do when they're not on the air, and then more importantly, what jobs are available to young college students like myself at that time in the radio industry. A lot of things that were thrown at me in a short period of time, and it was really exciting to actually be a part of all of that. I worked in the traffic department. I also assisted in writing commercials. I produced an on-air demo tape, and also participated in various promotional campaigns, which is the reason why we're here today at the MAM Music Center. It ends up being one of those promotional campaigns, which we will describe a little bit more with an interesting twist. One specific campaign in which I worked on involved the true voice of adult contemporary music, Mr. Barry Manilow. Now mind you, this was before the Botox injections, but now simply the man can't even crack a smile without you, if you remember that song, Dance Smile, without you, yeah, he can't do that now because of the injection. Good, good job, Barry. Um, but seriously, the campaign actually focused on having members join a frequent listeners club. Once they joined the frequent listeners club, that was the hook. So we brought them in that way with the potential of winning tickets to the Man Music Center, which we are here now, to see Barry Mano live in concert. In addition to the internship, I was also taking classes in the summer. So I had an action-packed full day with classes and then work. So by the time I arrived at the radio station, I was both tired and hungry. But being such a dedicated professional, and a pretty good damn DJ too, I must add, I put aside all of the frustration, the tiredness, and moved on with the day. But I guess being Italian, I still managed to feel those hunger pains. So I thought, hmm, what could I possibly reach for? Well, you know what it was? It was a bag of pretzels. And you'll never guess what happened next. While I assisted the on-air personality, Jay Patrick, with answering the phones for the Barry Manilow concert, I shifted the bag of pretzels that I had purchased. And all of a sudden, once the on-air personality signed off the air, here comes the guy that hired me, storming into the on-air studio like, oh my God, like something had happened, like a huge panic. Both Jay Patrick and I are looking at each other like, uh, dude, like, what are you smoking? What type of crack do you have? Because we would like some here. Like, what is going on? And all of a sudden, again, I shifted the bag of pretzels, and he immediately looked at me and said, you're out of here, you're, in the, you're out of the on-air studio. And I'm like looking at him like, are you serious? You've got to be kidding me. Are you serious? It's a bag of frickin' pretzels. Get over it, man. Just get over it. So as a result of the pretzel debacle, I was then reassigned to other studio duties, which ironically held more responsibility than what I was doing before and simply just answering the phone. So it truly did all work out in the end, which was great. Now, looking back, I'll never actually forget WKSD Media, the internship, the frequent listeners club, of course our Botox friend Barry Manilow, the Man Music Center, which is where we are today, filming, and of course, Snyder's and Hanover, the pretzels that say you must share the best, and I think we just did.